Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're just playing some Twist Metal 4, just kind of messing around with some Sweet Tooth, and we're going to ask, or try to answer, I guess, uh, a simple question that I'm curious what you guys' thoughts are as well in the comment section below. Let me know. The question of the day is, what makes Twisted Metal so addicting? And or what makes Twisted Metal so replayable? Now, the reason I ask this question is because this is a game series that, I mean, if you're new to the channel, you may not know this, but this is my favorite series of games of all time. And they've made a lot of them over the years. And it's, I think it is the longest running series of games in the PlayStation like history. And there's a, re a good reason for that. Being that this is pretty much the epitome of car combat, and it's a very, very like small genre of games. There's not many car combat games out there. Now, don't get me wrong, there definitely is other ones out there that aren't Twisted Metal, and they were pretty fun for what they were, but it was kind of just a early 2000s fad, if you will, kind of like the new metal of uh, music, if you ask, if you think of it that way. But essentially, like, Twisted Metal, it, it stands the test of time, I think, because it's just so replayable. You can come back to it, play a few matches, have a good time, jump out, and you're good. Just kind of like think of a modern-day Call of Duty where the reason you could go back to Modern Warfare 2 that came out back in 2010 and still have a really good time with it is because you can jump into a match real quick, fight a couple people, and get out, and you're good to go. Now, yes, this is mainly a single-player game, but the multiplayer, I think, is where Twisted Metal shined. I think being able to go against your friends or your family in split-screen was the epitome of Twisted Metal, and it's kind of where it was meant to be played. But you could still have a very fun time just by yourself going against the programmed AI. And I've talked about this before in previous videos, but Twisted Metal was pretty much one of the very first Battle Royale experiences that people ever played. And what I mean by that, you know, with the huge craze of Battle Royale with PUBG and then Fortnite and then now Warzone, Battle Royales really kind of came out of nowhere in a way. They, they weren't really thought of as a, as a main form of gaming content there wasn't many games that had battle royale modes or really any that anybody could think of before PUBG. it was the first ever massive multiplayer like let's have a hundred players fighting to the death for one to survive kind of like the hunger games and that's really you know what kicked it all off but i would argue that twisted metal was pretty much the first ever battle royale now granted of course it wasn't online multiplayer with 100 players no 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 but it was definitely you're one character battling a ton of other characters, all for the set goal of being the last one to survive to make it to the very end of the game in, in search of a prize, right? And their prize in these games was one wish, basically from like a magic genie, aka Calypso. So it, it really comes down to like the main reason I think these games are so addicting is because the whole nature of Battle Royale is just the gamble of you jumping in and hoping that you can be the best of the best and survive until the very end. Granted, of course, if you're playing single player, I mean, the game isn't that difficult. None of the games are super duper difficult, also excluding Twisted Metal 2 and 1 from that, but because <laughs> I think those games are hard as hell. But that being said, the games are definitely playable. They're definitely possible to win. And it's the same thing for Battle Royale games, right? Like Call of Duty Warzone or PUBG or Fortnite. Yeah, they're difficult to win because you're going against real players who are also just as good as you, if not better. But it's always a possibility that you could essentially win and be the victor of the Battle Royale. And that is what makes it so damn addicting is you want to go in and you want to win. It's kind of like betting, right? Like gambling. We all know that gambling is one of the biggest addictions in the world. So the fact that you're essentially gambling every time you play the game, it's what makes it addicting and wants you to come back and play it again and again and again. So yeah, the replayability is literally endless when it comes to Twisted Metal because of that battle royale nature. So that kind of holds up the question of should they make a new Twisted Metal related around the world of battle royale? And in my opinion, no, I, I, I definitely think they should, they should stay to their roots and they should, you know, create a Twisted Metal with a single player experience with a full on tournament, just like we've always come to know and love where you go against a certain amount of characters each map until you get to the very end and you meet Calypso. Now, that being said, I would absolutely adore a battle rail mode, which is a multiplayer mode where you're going against a hundred, if not more, 
players in one gigantic twist of metal match. I think that would be super cool. It'd be very interesting to say the least. And you got to admit, even if you're a, if you're a huge fan of the series, like that would be a lot of fun. It might not be amazing. It might not be perfect. It might not even work. Who knows? But at least giving it a try, I think would be very cool. And I would be all for it. And that's essentially my main reason as to why I think Twisted Metal holds up after all these years. You know, it's just that addicting nature to it. On top of that, it's got good gameplay in general. I mean, the controls have always been very tight and responsive. Graphics can, you can kind of take it or leave it. I think Twisted Metal 3 and 4 looked very good and they still hold up to this day. But of course, the original Twisted Metals, eh, the graphics weren't the main selling point. It was about the gameplay. And it was the creativity, I would I would argue, with the different characters and the different endings and the ending cutscenes that really made up for a, a package that was worth it to go through and have that chance at being the victor at the end of the game. And again, that just all kind of comes wrapping around a little present of Battle Royale. But who knows, maybe there's more to it that I'm not really thinking about at the moment or I'm not getting to the point. But I am really curious to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below on if there is something that I'm missing that isn't necessarily related to Battle Royale or an addicting factor, but what makes Twisted Metal so iconic and nostalgic for so many people. Because I suppose another way you could look at it, and I kind of brought it up earlier a little bit, is the nostalgia factor of the characters. I think Twisted Metal would not be as successful as it was if it weren't for having really interesting or at least really wacky and rememberable characters with semi-interesting plot points as to the reason why they're in this contest. Because if you just created a world, let's not even say you created a world, let's just say you have a game with vehicles that look interesting, each vehicle has their own special weapon, and you put them in a battle, re re uh, battle arena, and you have them fight, and that's it. There's no substance to it. There's no reasoning behind it. There's no overall arcing story or world. It's just a fighting game in cars. Now, if you do that, in which I'm not going to point names, but there definitely were car combat games just like that, where they saw Twisted Metal and they thought they could make their own version of it. And those games flopped. And I think that's why is they didn't have any characters that you could really either put yourself in their shoes or put it in your mind the fact where you you never forget them they'd be in your mind forever because they were that iconic that interesting that funny whatever and i think that's where twisted metal really excelled is just the creativity overall and that goes to not only just their backstories and the character but the design of the vehicles and the special weapons being so unique and different you just didn't get that at all in any other car combat game that i can remember anyway it kind of reminds me of like mortal Kombat versus street fighter so, in my opinion, I think Street Fighter is a better fighting game because of better combos and, you know, the programmers or whatever, they know how to make a fighting game. But I would also argue, in my opinion, that Mortal Kombat is a better story game in terms of having a full-on story with characters and a lore and, you know, the bloody, of course, fatalities, which is always fun to watch, and the creativity and how those fatalities are performed. And the, the overall designs of each character are so unique and different and wacky. And it's over the top. And I think that's why Mortal Kombat, in a way, is more popular. Well, that you know, this is, of course, just my opinion. I could be completely wrong. I don't know the actual stats. But it seems to me that Mortal Kombat overall is more popular of a game than Street Fighter. But yeah, it's just, this is a small example, I suppose, you know, of a small, uh, not a small genre, but a genre of gaming where you got the fighting games. And you got all those subsidiaries of fighting games, and then you got car combat games, and all the people who try to make their own version of car combat. But with car combat games, the really unique thing about it, and this is what I've talked to about with many of my friends, including my buddy Blue Tag, who's made a couple of videos on Twisted Metal. Definitely will give him um, some love. Definitely go check out his channel if you haven't. And he's made a couple of videos where he talks about these quote unquote knockoffs of Twisted Metal, uh, like Vigilante 8 and stuff like that. And I, I talked to him about this in private where I said, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with the word knockoff, mainly because Twisted Metal, yes, it was pretty much, if not the first car combat game ever made. So it technically invented car combat. But that does that mean that no other game could be a car combat game and be successful? I, I don't think so. I think there definitely could be other car combat games that are successful, but they're just not going to be Twisted Metal. And I think that's the tough part about it is that everybody thinks of twisted metal when they think of car combat 
And thus, if you were to make your own version of a car combat game, everybody's going to compare you to the originator, to the elite, to Twisted Metal. So that might be another reason why these games are so synonymous and so nostalgic is because they became such a household name that everybody knows the name or at least have seen Sweet Tooth somewhere, even if they've never really played the games themselves. But yeah, without going over the same points over and over again and repeating myself, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in this video is my reasons and why my thoughts on why I think Twisted Metal is a super addicting game, why it has so much replayability, and why it's so nostalgic for so many people. But once again, if there's something I missed or you have a point that you want to make that I may not have covered in this video for why you think it's so addicting and nostalgic, please, please let us all know in the comment section below. I love hearing people's thoughts and opinions on Twisted Metal, and that's the whole reason I've been uploading so much content to this channel recently, and I think we've gotten a lot of new people here, and I just can't thank you guys enough for enjoying the content and hanging out with me. And really quick before we head out, I do want to talk about a comment I got on one of my videos recently. Uh, I'm not going to show the comment, mainly because, for one, I don't want to put these, this person on blast, and they also talked about another YouTuber in their comment, and I don't want to put that YouTuber on blast either. But they made a good point that I really want to talk about and ask your guys' opinions on uh, in the comment section below too. So in one of my previous videos, I asked if you guys would like me to record any gameplay of Twist Metal 1 or Twist Metal 2 or do like full tournament playthroughs, anything like that. And they said that they actually would prefer me not to do that because there's another YouTuber that's been uploading a lot of content on Twist Metal lately. And they did like a full playthrough of every character with Twist Metal 1 and 2 but they stated that this this YouTuber just basically complained about it the entire time and it was really a drag to watch. And even though they liked their content, they didn't like those videos. And they said that they didn't want the same thing to happen to me because I have notoriously said that I'm not a fan of Twist Metal 1 or 2. Like, I love them. You know, they, they are the pioneers of the series and I have a special place in my heart for them. But in terms of gameplay, I, I just don't prefer to play them. I prefer Black over any Twist Metal and then I go to 3, 4, Small Brawl. And head on but i don't really play the original two just because they're not very fun to me so basically that's the reason i brought this up is because i'm curious is this person you know do they have a good point do you think i should just stay away from that because you know i might complain here and there about the gameplay and i know i did in my previous video with axel and twist small two i did complain a little bit and i do want to apologize about that you know that's never my intention is to bash a game or you know, bash uh, really anything. It's just, I just like to talk about what's happening at the moment, and that, those are my honest reactions. So it's one of those things where I definitely understand that you guys don't want to watch content of me freaking out or being upset. You'd rather watch me enjoying myself, and I totally agree with you. But on the other hand, I know people who kind of like the reality of, you know, if something isn't going right and you want to complain about it, there's people that are all for that, and they, they kind of find it funny when people rage. I don't know, but... That's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching. Again, leave a like, share, support as always. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace.